Hi and welcome to this beginner's explanation of gamma correction and linear workflow. Uh, and it's a beginner's explanation on two counts. One is it's for people who are beginners at this subject and it's also by somebody who pretty much is a beginner in this subject. Um, but what I'm hoping to bring to this is a very simple explanation of what this whole gamma correction and linear workflow uh, subject is. Uh, and how even at a very simplistic level can really improve your images uh, and especially if you're doing interior lighting as we'll see at the end it's a very good example of how how using uh, this this workflow can really enhance uh, interior lighting uh, which has always for me been difficult in in 3ds it's certainly more challenging than doing just an object on a on a you know a flat plane or something um but I think the reason why, and certainly it's the reason why I stayed away from this subject, is because it can get very complicated and very uh, um, vast very, very quickly. Um, I mean, linear workflow is, is one way of, of doing um, or working with gamma correction and everything else. But then you've got tone mapping as well, which is uh, how, uh, another way of dealing with, it, with um, linear workflow. Uh, and, and that subject can get huge in itself because there's different um, ways of doing that and there's different uh, techniques and methods and all that sort of stuff. We're not going to touch on that, we're just going to keep it very very simple. Uh, probably over simple actually, uh, ju just to uh, really get to the core essence of what this subject is. Um, so there may be technical descriptions in here which don't give the full story or maybe almost too simplistic that they um, may appear incorrect or something like that so if anybody's an expert on this subject I'm sure they're probably going to cringe on some of these slides but um, this has helped me going through this has helped me to sort of understand uh, on a very basic level how I can get involved in this and, and, and utilize it so the first question I had was uh, and it's something that a lot of these tutorials um, uh, that are out there never explained to me was what is gamma you know, what is it, where does it come from um, and it's all to do with it turns out how devices display images this is the start of the story of this um, and it's not limited to as we've got an example here of uh, computer screens uh, specifically you know CRTs, TFTs it, it's any electronic device which displays an image essentially uh, and it's it's it basically starts with an input voltage. So if we look back it's how devices display images. Now how does a device display an image? Well an input voltage is applied to the screen and again we're talking very simplistic here uh, and that translates on your screen as light intensity. So you know as the voltages change you get dark and light areas and that's how it displays an image. And But the problem is uh, well, in an ideal world, before we go into the problem, in an ideal world, the input signal, this voltage, would correspond directly to the light intensity. So whatever you put in is exactly what you get out. And again, we're talking simplistic here. But it would be this linear uh, sort of correlation. Uh, but it doesn't work that way. What actually happens is uh, it looks something like this. We've got this uh, power law function or curve. It's about as technical as I'm going to get on this. Uh, that's the technical description for that curve. It's a power law function. It's not an exponential curve. It's uh, whatever that means in mathematical terms. But what it means for us, it, you can see on this curve, as the, as the input signal is increased, the light intensity initially doesn't do a great deal. It's pretty, it's pretty all at the same level. And then it accelerates quite quickly. Uh, and what that means for your images, if gamma correction was not applied, it would mean that all your images are dark uh, in the uh, or your shadows are uh, overly dark and then suddenly the midtones get right a lot brighter and then your uh, your highlights get kind of you know blown out so in order to kind of bring this back to something a bit more uh, respectable a compensation is added this inverse of the of the uh, power law function um, to counteract it and bring it back to a linear linear sort of uh, scale and, and it's that curve there that I was pointing at. That is gamma. That, that's what gamma is. And the technical description, as it says there, is the numerical value of this exponent is given the name, colloquially, gamma. So 
that's what it is and that's where it comes from uh, and, it, and effectively what it what it's doing is it's it, it's tr you know changing the way that the um, the light intensity is displayed on screen so that we can see it better basically it, again in a simplistic sort of terminology it just helps to display images so that we can see them that's what gamma does so how does this affect 3d applications um, well 3d applications like Modo and Lightwave uh, are floating point render engines and they also work in a linear linear scale this this linear space internally um, you know they don't have to worry about this input voltage versus brightness um, but it's the fact that they work in this fashion uh, where the the issue comes in um, not to do with necessarily linear space but actually the texture uh, sort of images and color pickers that are on screen or you know the scans or the photographs that we use in 3D because in order for them to be dis displayed on screen they have this gamma applied already they, it's almost you know it's actually burnt into the into the values of the of the image or the the uh, color picker that you use um, and the caveat to this is that this doesn't apply to all images um, HDR images high dynamic range images are in linear space anyway and that's not to say that you might not come across one that's not being crunched down. It might it might be saved as a HDR image, but actually it could have gamma applied to it. But in all intents and purposes, they are usually in linear space, so you don't need to uh, uh, de-gamma them as we're going to go into. And also, some color pickers in applications uh, can remove gamma from the pick colors, so you will see it on screen normally. You'll pick that color, but as you you know, okay that color requester, it will de-gamma the image uh, the 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 color. Uh, and Jovian for Lightwave does this, um, but certainly things like the Windows Color Picker don't do this. And so that's the, that's the issue: is that you've got this inter, uh, uh, linear internal engine of these render pa rendering packages, but all these inputs are coming in, uh, and this applies to lighting. You know, when you pick colors for lighting as well, uh, have got this gamma applied to it. So what you end up with is, is this a rendering that's got mixed gamma values in it. I mean, it's, it would be a, a high dynamic range as it's displayed on screen, you know, so it, it is a linear, in all intents and purposes, linear image, but some of the texture values that are in there that are used, or the lighting or whatever, uh, will have this gamma applied. Um, so you, you end up with this sort of mix match of, of uh, gamma in your final rendering. Uh, and this is another, uh, the other issue with this is that if you don't degamma the colors and textures uh, but apply gamma on the final image because you've read about or you've heard about this uh, gamma correction and you need to do it so you apply gamma at the end then what happens is all those images that had gamma applied already get double gammaed they and that's why they look washed out as we'll see in in, in the images at the end um, so to combat this uh, the obvious thing to do is to Gamma all these inputs, all these images and picked colors, uh, which is actually quite easy to do. Um, and essentially, what you do, uh, certainly on in Lightwave and Modo, there is uh, for, for the images they they've got a gamma setting, so you can uh, de gamma the the image, and you do that by uh, usually they're set to one, so you leave the one there, you divide. The, uh, that one by the target gamma that you're going for uh, and, and ideally this target gamma would be um, whatever gamma was used on those images but because we don't you know it's impossible to know for certain um, the the general um, consensus is to use 2.2 or I think Modo uses 1.6 by default as a general uh, gamma sort of target um, the point is to degamma it, uh, and usually what people end up doing is is, is degammering to the target device that they're going to display it on, rather than what these images were gammed with. But what we end up with is this: these degammed inputs going into a, um, or you know, effectively turned into a linear space, um, even though they're not HDR, going into a linear engine, and then what you end up with is a linear, completely linear render, uh, or work, linear workspace at the end. Um, in, in your rendering and, and, and that's what's coined this linear workflow that's what it means it means to keep everything in your rendering pipeline linear in terms of its color space and 
But obviously what you need to do at the end of that is, if you're going to display it on screen, uh, and this is why if you keep everything linear and you look at a, a rendering that's, that's been kept that way, it will look very, very dark. And that's because it's not had gamma applied to it. So you apply gamma at the end. Uh, and then it will it looks correct. But by by doing it this way, uh, degammering and then applying gamma, um, really helps with uh, lighting, and especially on interiors, as, as I mentioned. So we'll, we'll go into that in, in a second. 